Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. It is 10 a.m. on a Monday morning. Not great, especially if you got work, if you're able to go to work. Though, in my neck of the woods, it is. This is a this is a holiday, so any anyone that is working that isn't a would normally be working that isn't a government employee, they're off. So that's a thing. Sort of. Uh, it's weird. Actually, no, I'm totally wrong about that. A lot of places will be closed because it's, it's a, just a government holiday. I don't know. I don't know. It mostly matters. School kids aren't in school. That's, that's the most I know for sure. Anyway, I hope everybody's Valentine's Day was fun, whether you spent it uh, with a partner or spent it on your own. I just hope it was good either way. I was here. I entertained you guys for two streams as best I could. So that was, that was, that was fun. I, 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 I was productive. Not having any technical problems like yesterday, thankfully. So I'm going to be able to get right into this. And hopefully not randomly stop a half hour in to reset my router because the internet decides to screw up again. <laughs> yeah, if you notice, uh, our, homepage, our homepage here for the game has changed a little. We now have the little uh, picture of uh, young Lily shown in the title card for Act 2 here now. That just kind of tells you how many of each girl you've done. I mean, when we first started this game, there was nothing here. After we went through that whole uh, introduction and got into Act 1 proper life expectancy, uh, we had this. We had Hassel holding a bandaged heart. And now that we're in Act 2 past, we have that. So the more we complete, the more pictures get added until this gets... Uh, well, this gets somewhat full. This nice this corner is going to get full of pictures from all the act openings. Yeah, and there in our cinema, we've got our opening and the opening animation for Lily's Route. Yeah, this one's honestly one of my favorite ones. I'll ex once we get toward the actual end of her route, I'll explain why I like it the most. Let's see, what do we got on the jukebox? Oh, we still we got mo we got a good chunk of the tracks now. Which is nice. Gallery. Yeah, we got a few more. Compared to last time. Not a whole lot. Got a few more. Generally one with each girl appearing at some point. Look, there's one with Emmy. There's one with Hanako, one with Lily, Rin. That's just the double splash of uh, <laughs> Lily and Shizune. Yeah, if there's if there's just pictures of the solitary character, generally that's the start of their pictures for their route. So, essentially, right after, like, with this picture of Hanako, right after this would all be pictures from her route. And the single image of Lily, eh, same concept. Library, it's like, hey, you want to go through Act 1? Want to go through specific segments of Act 1 again? There you are. And as you can see, we still have a lot of, uh... Act 1 to actually see. Because obviously, depending on your choices, you'll get to different points. Yeah, I just noticed it actually summarizes what happens in each little thing there. Like in our prologue, on a cold snowy day, Hassel's dreams are about to be realized only to be cut short by a sudden heart attack. So yeah, it gives you a good, nice little, uh, nice little brief summary of what the heck's going on. After trying warning at her stall, Hassel and Lily... <laughs> So it takes Lily to find Hanako. That was the last one we saw before, you know, we started Act 2. 
And as it says here, we are 15% done. Lily's got a lot going on. And then the grayed out ones for Emmy, Hanako, Rin, Shizune. We'll get those as we go along. Emmys and Hanukos, we're going to 100% get no problem because I already have saves set and ready for them. Rin and Shizune. Hmm. Eh, it's going to be a little more of a challenge because I've really got to go back and, you know, play through a bit of Act 1 again. But oh well, I mean, it's, it's going to happen. something real quick that'll do Oop. Oop. okay so we saw through all that and uh, just all these little tiny little chibis <laughs> Hanako, she's just all alone. Just don't want to be near anybody. Heart breaks for her. Uh, one moment. I'm just gonna keep messing with some stufferino. Yeah, that'll do. I think. We'll see how it goes. You tell me how it goes, how everything sounds. All right, let's load it up. What happened last time? We walked back to the school with Lily and Rin, because Rin is just kind of lost. Well, Rin was being Rin. Let's put it simply. She was being herself. <laughs> and it was from there, we decided to go the next day, just the day before the festival, we decided, uh, Let's go, let's go into town. Maybe we'll find Lily there. Which we did, and we also ended up meeting her sister, uh, Akira. And then come festival time, we managed to get her away from her stall, find Hanako, and watch the fireworks all together. With the Sao kind of coming to a realization that watching the fireworks with the two of them is the happiest he's probably been in a long time. Which is a little, a little bit depressing. But I mean, he did just, he did have a massive life-altering event, so. He, he, he's gonna take what he can get at this point, I think. Any little, any little bit of happiness he can get, he's gonna latch on to. That, that kind of goes for everybody. Every little bit we can get, it adds up in the long run. All right, we're now waking up at uh, the next day after the festival. I wake to the annoying din of my alarm. It's bright red numerals lighting up my face. It's the same alarm clock I, alarm clock I had at home. One of the few remaining artifacts from my days before coming to Yamaku. I'd hope that using it would help ease my transition into this new life. No such luck, though. Groggily dragging myself out of bed, I wipe the sleep out of my eyes, then reach over to my desk. I open a couple bottles of medication, strewn across it, and swallow a few pills dry. Oh, jeez. Can anyone legitimately just do that no problem I can't I cannot take I cannot swallow a pill dry I need to down it with water by now the process is starting to become automatic something I should be glad for given their purpose feeling much more awake than before I wander into the bathroom while the shower warms up my mind begins to wander as my new daily routine begins once again. 
bright colors of the fireworks fill my mind, as do the two girls with whom I spent my time watching them. It feels strange to be moved so much by people I know, I know so little about. And again, I suppose these aren't normal circumstances. At least I have someone to talk to now, aside from my schoolmate next door, Kenji. The time left before school begins today waning, I begin to get ready for class. Walking through the door into the classroom, I notice that I'm still somewhat early. I see about five or six students milling around, most of them looking as if they'd rather be in, still in bed. It's at, time it's at times like this that I appreciate being a morning person. That said, two students in particular seem to seem just as perky as always. Hey, Shizune. Hey, Misha. I suddenly realized that my greeting would be lost on the former, so I quickly follow it up with a wave. She doesn't seem overly bothered. Or interested, for that matter. Hello, Hee-chan! Are you feeling well? I can only assume her greeting comes from Shizune. It's hard to tell if she's speaking as herself or Shizune sometimes. Better than most everyone else, I guess. You two seem bright and chipper. Misha signs this back to Shizune as I say it, eliciting a somewhat terse answer, if her sharp and rapid arm movements are any indication. Considering that these two made such a big deal out of the festival preparations, I probably should have chosen my words more carefully. Since you're a new student, we've been cutting you some slack. Please don't expect this kind of task dodging to be allowed in the future. Misha looks as if she's about to add her own comment, but quickly goes back to interpreting as Shizune continues unabated. While your contribution to Class 3-2 stall is appreciated... Huh. Word sure got around quickly. That or these two have their fingers on the pulse of the school. We would have preferred your efforts be focused on the task at hand. Namely, your own class. As much as I hate to admit it, they do have a point. Before I can respond, though, she and I add something more, which draws a smile from Misha. Did you enjoy the festival, then? Lecture over, I guess. Yeah, it was good. Did you two enjoy it? Shizune gives a short nod as Misha grins and bounces her head up and down. The contrast, side by side, is amusing. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice more students starting to trickle into the classroom. A quick glance at my watch confirms that they're a few minutes late. I look over to Hanako's seat and realize she's already there and contentedly reading a book. It makes me wonder just how long she's been there without me noticing. With heavy footsteps coming up the hallway signaling Muto's arrival, our idle talking comes to an end and I take a seat next to Misha. As the door slides open, he strides through with a ponderous gait. His posture is even worse than usual. His eyes are barely staying open. Guess my quip to Lily and Hanako about the staff was misplaced. Everyone opens their books as he reaches his desk, and the first class of the new week begins. I rub my eyes as the lunch bell rings out, glad for the temporary reprieve from work. I'm entirely unsurprised when I look over to the door and see Lily standing there, cane in hand, patiently waiting for Hanako. Considering her acceptance of my request to join them yesterday, I decided to spend my lunchtime with them rather than eat alone. 
Hanako moves surprisingly fast to meet her companion, and the two enter the hallway before I can catch up. Lily's head turns slightly, registering the sound of footsteps behind her. As Hanako notices and follows her lead, she almost jumps in surprise. Hi Hisao? I mean, um, hello, Hisao. Hi. Sorry if I startled you. Lily turns to greet me, helped in her orientation by Hanako. Good afternoon, Hisao. Are you joining us? If it's no trouble. There's not much else to do, really. Lily gives a small nod, as if to silently brush away any idea that it would be troubling in the least. We descend one set of stairs and walk down the hallway to the usual room, our pace somewhat quicker than usual thanks to Lily using Hanako for direction, rather than her cane and the railings. As expected, it's deserted. The sounds of the other clubs can only barely be heard as sunlight streams into the room from outside. Looking around the room, I notice a couple of empty easels propped up against a wall that I don't think were there before. The art club must use this room as extra storage. Should I get the chest set out? Monica's voice seems less tense than when she's when she's directly addressing Lily. Yes. I'll make tea while you sort the pieces. Uh, I can do that for you if you'd like. She ponders the offer for a moment before smiling, confirming that I've made the right choice. Her face is remarkably easy to read. Okay, her face is easy to read, but just yesterday you were saying her eyes are impo like impossible to read emotion for. I don't, dude, make up your mind. Her eyes are part of her face. Very well. Thank you. She slides her retracted cane into the handle of her bag and sets it against one of the table legs before taking a seat opposite Hanako. As I prepare tea for the three of us, I can hear the small wooden pieces being set up set on the board. I wonder how good Lily is at chess, given her circumstances. By the time I place the steaming teacups onto the table, Lily and Hanako have already moved their first pieces as they nibble on sandwiches and rice balls from their respective bags. I note that the chessboard they're using has holes in the middle of each square and pegs on the bottom of the pieces, and each has a dark and each dark square is slightly raised. One moment, my pupper wants out of the room. Watching Lily's fingers skate over the board, tracing out the position of the pieces, makes me marvel a little at the simple ingenuity of the design. It must be specifically made for blind players. Here you go. Anako gives a small nod as I put the cup down next to her, s her side of the board. Lily's hand ventures sideways slightly, so I place the cup up touching the tips of her fingers, a gesture she seems to appreciate. I finally take a seat and silently sip my tea as the two play. The contrast in their appearances while playing is interesting to watch. Hanako looks closely at the board, her face one of focused concentration. Lily, on the other hand, keeps her head level and maintains her calm neutrality. Lily's gentle voice addresses both of us as she continues to play. How was class, now that the festival's over? I look to Hanako to see whether she'll answer first, but see that she's doing the same. 
not great. Half the class seems to be dozing off. Even including the teacher. Not to mention a test on top of all of that. Anako quietly adds to her ha adds her own agreement with this. I could imagine that being difficult for you, being a transfer student. Well, I think I did fine. Other than the shock of a test coming so early, science is probably my best subject. How'd you do, Hanako? Me? Uh, okay, I guess. Hanako's too sincere to be able to pull off lying very well. That much is obvious. Lily's smile slips very slightly. From her reaction, a Hanako mustn't be skilled enough at academics to do very well without preparation. How did your class handle it, Lily? It went surprisingly well, actually. Only one student was absent, which was better than what the teacher expected. I wonder who that one student who was absent was. Probably well, starts with a K and rhymes with Genji. The topic all but run dry, the two concentrate on their chess game once again. I can't say I've ever liked the idea of chess as a spectator sport, but given its unique nature, for once I'm wrapped in watching the game unfold. time wears on, both of them demonstrate decent skill at playing the game. Having captured two more pawns than Hanako, Lily has the upper hand, but only slightly. Until Hanako makes a strange move with her queen. Seizing upon this lapse in judgment, Lily takes the, takes the piece with her knight. Without hesitation, Hanako moves a pawn to take Lily's rook on the opposite side of the board and promotes it to queen. Lily's face falters as her fingers move over the pieces, and she realizes she just fell into, fell to Hanako's trap. It's a little distracting to have the board traced out after each move, even if it is at a necessity. Judging by Hanako's lack of reaction, she must be used to this. She and Lily must have played at least a few games of chess against each other, after all. Check. That's not bad at all. Nice, Sonico. The compliment causes her to flower into a surprised blush. Thank you. I didn't think it would work. I look over to Lily, her fingers having just finished tracing out the position of her remaining pieces in an attempt to ex extricate her king from this bind. I think this is checkmate. Hmm? I take another look at the board to confirm. Sure enough, her king has nowhere to escape without being threatened by another piece. My earlier question as to which of them is better at this has just been answered. So it is. Wait, does Lily have to follow the can't touch the piece unless you're moving it rule? Uh, probably not, considering after every single round, like after every single move Hanako does, she has to feel out like the entire board to see what's changed and to remember where her pieces are. Also, hi Jen, how's it going? Plus, I mean, this is for fun. This isn't competitive stuff. <laughs> Lily gives a small sigh as Hanako smiles. From their reactions, this seems like a fairly usual result. If Queen's Gambit has taught me anything, it's that chess is never not competitive. 
Uh, another route someone gets a little too competitive with chess. And I'll give you two guesses into who that one, who's the most competitive of the five girls. How long have you two been playing? Yes, the deaf one. She takes everything as a competition. Yeah, she's an A, yep. She's an A, the deaf one. Super competitive in literally every aspect of her life. Copying stuff down on the board? Gotta do it first. Gotta get all the yeah, classwork up on the board? Get it done first. Put trash in the garbage can? Get it done first. No mercy from her. <laughs> Lol at no mercy. <laughs> well, we eventually get to Shizune's route. Uh, you'll see what kind of you'll see exactly what kind of person she is. Since I was young. Lily nods at Hanako's brief answer. I haven't played this game in like a 10 to 12 years. <laughs> yeah. Wait, how old is this? Uh, as of this year, actually, the game is actually only nine years old. Shockingly, it's almost 10 years old. First real visual novel, though. I mean, this game was in development for so many years. And it all started from a concept art page from 2000. nods at Hanako's brief answer. Hanako taught me how to play soon after I met her. I can beat her every now and then, but that's a rarity. I don't seem to have the right mindset for it. Yeah, you definitely would have been in uni by then. Still, I, I, I still enjoy the hell out of this, and I only played it, like, less than a year ago. So, again, uh, as usual, I'm behind on everything! <laughs> if Lily came to Yamaku at the start of high school, and met Hanako when she moved into the dorms, that means she's only been playing for about a year. After seeing Hanako's level of play, I'm not too surprised Lily has trouble beating her. But she's better at languages than I am, so... Lily gives an appreciative, if slightly amused, smile at Hanako's quick reversal of her compliment. Well, that's how it is. Much to everyone's surprise, the bell suddenly rings, heralding an end to the lunch break. Hmm. That game lasted longer than I thought it did. Same. I guess we'd better get back to class. Hanako's already in the middle of packing up, so I take Lily's bag and offer it to her. To my surprise, she takes it and nods, but then places it back down on the table. Isao, may I make a request? Sure, go ahead. Would you mind if I were to quickly feel your face? Oh, uh, no, go ahead. I don't mind. The question takes me severely off guard, 
but once I regain my composure, it seems sensible enough. So far, Lily's had no idea what I actually looked like, and this would be her only way to find out. Lily raises her right hand, which I had taken mine and guide to my face before letting go. The room is entirely silent as Lily's hand moves over and around my features. From my chin, to my cheeks, to everywhere else. I expect this to feel a lot more disquieting than it does. I suppose that's because the action is entirely a matter of practicality, being functionally no different to simply looking at someone's face. Her hand is soft. It takes me by surprise, but, but, but what takes me by surprise is the length of her fingers. Not to mention how sure even how sure even the slightest of her movements are. Holy crap, I can barely read today. I have no doubt that her lever, level of tactile feeling would be far beyond mine. Her hand briefly runs once through my hair before retreating. I'm sure that every inch of my face has been committed to her memory. It's only now, too, that I realize Hanako has been silently watching the entire time. That's gotta be a little awkward. Thank you for letting me do that, Asao. And if I might add, I think you're quite handsome. I blush a little at the remark before raising a questioning eyebrow. But if you can't see how... Just because I can't see, that doesn't mean I don't have my own preferences. Um, we'd better go now. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess we'll see you later then, Lily. Walking through the hallways back to our classrooms, I notice that Hanako seems quieter than before also more comfortable. Did you know some blind people are still racist? Isn't that such BS? Huh. Did not know that. That's actually new to me. It's okay, it's okay. Seems whether it's in your streams or when you come into mine, I'm always learning something new because of you. <laughs> Lily, her hand on Hanako's shoulder, seems to pick up on her assured pace as well, smiling as they walk. If I could spend the rest of my time at Yamaku like this, I don't think it'd be so bad. All that's needed for joy are small exchanges of happiness, after all. As I reach my desk and set my bag beside it, I realize something. Or rather, my stomach does. I'm so busy with those two, I forgot to buy lunch. Ah, so he just goes the rest of the day without having lunch. Are any of the girls musicians? Um... No, I don't believe so. Yeah, n yeah none of them are musicians from what I recall. Saturday, my second most favorite day of the week. This is almost entirely due to the fact that it's the day with the second least amount of school, with class ending at the beginning of lunch. 
I opened my door confidently, myself being more confident of being able to get enjoyment out of the fine weather and shorter class length. I confidently stride down the hallway and down the stairs to the lobby of the male dorms. Will I also confidently open the doors and then confidently strut across the campus to class while confidently humming a tune? Confidently? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a way too... Confidently was used way too much. God damn it! <laughs> It may be bad to do, but use a thesaurus, please. <laughs> he doth protest too much for things. <laughs> I confidently look behind me to see whose footsteps are approaching. I lose my confidence in this day being enjoyable. Hey, man. Sup? Not much, I guess. Just looking forward to the afternoon. You? It's always gonna be Kenji. Always. <laughs> he wraps an arm around my slumped shoulders far too comfortably. Something's up. Let's step outside, shall we? I was just about to, before you stopped me. He doesn't take my reaction to his theatrics well. Ignoring him, I walk outside and start down the steps. It doesn't take too long for him to catch up with me again. I wonder if he wants money, or to rant about another conspiracy. Maybe both. I got a bone to pick with you. Uh-huh. That's about that blonde. You know who I'm talking about. Conspiracy it is. For a moment, I contemplate feigning inger ignorance, but realize this will go quicker if I just let him get it all out. Lily? The one from your class? You're on first name terms with her?! looks positively shocked at this development. Did he not expect me to be able to answer? He gathers himself and coughs into, into his fist. Dramatically, like everything else he does. Well, never mind that. I'm here to warn you. You know, man to man. Warn me about what? Lily? Yeah. You don't know her, man. It's mostly true. I've only known her and Hanako for less than two weeks. And even then, we've just been exchanging banal chant chatter about school as, as we while away lunch. Ugh. I'm pretty sure you don't either. That's not the point. You're the one spending inordinate amounts of time with her. It distresses me that someone like Kenji, who's probably as far out of the loop as one could possibly get, knows about such a trivial fact as who I choose to befriend. And yeah, also his theme song is also called Out of the Loop. I love his stupid theme. And again, I am a transfer student, and she's not only the representative of their class, but also a tall blonde. Maybe I should appreciate this ranting as a warning that the rumor mill exists in this school, and that I'm firmly within it. It's just lunch. Nothing special. Look, man. Under the bridge. See this bridge? You're under it. 
man's gotta do what a man's gotta do to get intel. I just want to make sure you don't end up too far under the bridge. You're losing me, Kenji. That's okay. Lots of people get lost. That's why I'm here to help. Just be careful around her, okay? She looks all harmless on the outside, but I've heard shit. Bad shit. You know the student council, right? He seems to involuntarily shudder as he says us the words. Putting him and Shizune together in a room is an amusing mental exercise. I wonder if they've met. Yeah, Shizune and Misha are in my class. I seem to have dodged the draft, though. Good man, good man. But this blonde? She was there. In student council. Right? Damn. There. I see. And? And she's not there now. Seriously, think about it. Something must have gone down. I stopped walking for a moment, giving the idea more thought than I probably should. It would explain that fight the two had, at least in part. Wait, no, not really. Even leaving the student council would need a catalyst. In the end, it doesn't explain much at all. Other than the fact that their feud goes back some ways. I guess you have a point. I'm not seeing how that really affects me, though. Okay, I feel this one. Lily's foreign, obviously. Obviously. Now, what nationality is she? I opened my mouth to give the answer, but realized that I have none. In fact, I've given the matter very little thought. Given she has no accent and acts perfectly Japanese, I suppose it never really seemed important. Now that he mentions it, though... I'm rather curious. To be honest, I don't know. Maybe English? They like tea. So, Jesus Christ. Just because she likes tea does not make her English. I like tea. Okay, I mean, I have English family, so that's besides the point. But still, whatever. Just kind of a weird thing. It's like maybe you're English. Maybe she's English because she likes tea. It's not how that works. I probably shouldn't resort to stereotypes, but that's the only lead I have. Okay, at least he recognizes it's a stereotype. This doesn't mean he should say it. You're not thinking. Luckily, you have me here to think for you. Gee, thanks. Love it when men do what? Think for you or say stereotypes? Okay, the, thankfully you have me to think for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's just, I mean, I can scroll it back. That's what I love about Katawa Shoujo. I can scroll back through it. There we go. You're, yeah, you're not thinking. Luckily, you have me to think for you. So yeah, that, there, that's just something for whenever you ever decide to play this game, whether alone or on stream. You can scroll back the dialogue with the mouse wheel. It'll even, you know, bring the music back and forth, too, so it, you know, keeps the mood. 
I don't know any other visual novels that let you scroll back that easily. And I mean, if you don't want to do that, there's still the text history, so you can just see it all in text format. He brushes off the quip effortlessly. Now answer me this. Who has lots of social power is filthy stinking rich. You know, blondes are all rich, right? Has a long history of disputes and used to belong to a much larger organization. The Roman Catholic Church? Well, okay, there's that. But there's also the Mafia. Come on. Rich, foreign, there's no way she doesn't have connections to them. I have reason to doubt the logic of his deductions, but he shows no sign of stopping. So do you know where I think she's from? Italy? Mainland Italy, Italy small time, dude. She has to be from Sicily. All those mafioso types come from there. Fredonia, yes. <laughs> yes, she totally comes from Fredonia. <laughs> Wait, no, Russia. Damn, this could be bad. The mafia there is serious business, man. Ex-KGB everywhere, pillar militaries, hardcore smuggling, and... Wait, wait, stop. Just slow down a sec. What point are you trying to get at here? You can see Shizune is Russian. <laughs> she does basically try to rule the school as a dictatorship. Or at least, like, just to totalitarian. You don't know what she'll do, man. I won't get in your way. Agents don't operate like that. But I just want you to be careful. When the time comes, we'll need all the help we can get. I don't want to lose you, comrade. Well, at least he's concerned for me. Kinda. I wave goodbye to him as we separate to our respective classes, but I'm not sure that he sees the gesture. Piling my books into my bag, I catch a glimpse of the library books I'd borrowed last week. I might as well return them, considering they took all of two days to finish. I briefly consider inviting Hanako along to the library, but she's already gone. It'll probably be better for my studying if I'm alone anyway. With a quick stretch and a wave to a couple of classmates who give the same to me, I make my way out of the classroom. As I open my bag and shove the books through the return slots in the front counter, I hear I notice a strange person behind the desk. Old and graying. She must be Yuko's replacement when she's working at the cafe. I begin looking for a free table, a task made somewhat difficult considering that, despite there not being many students in here, they're all sitting at their own tables. I notice a familiar head of hair. Now, noticing a familiar head of hair, I walk over to one near the braille section. It's hard to tell whether Lily's concentrating hard or not. Her placid expression holding perfectly still as her fingers slide across the dot-filled pages of her book. Hi, mind if I sit here? Hmm? Oh, not a pr no problem at all. She trails off, evidently still focused on her business at hand. Ah, Masao. She gives a nod of greeting as I sit opposite her at the table. Pluck a chemistry textbook out of my bag and quickly thumb to the chapter we're covering in class. For a while, we sit there and read, each in our own way. 
Seeing her reminds me of what Kenji said this morning, though. That, and the fact that I've never seen someone read in Braille before, makes me keep throwing glances at her. I kind of feel guilty about it, given that she has no way to realize I'm doing so. So I decide to just ask her about it. Her lineage isn't exactly a state secret, after all. And there is another thing I've only just noticed from her movements. Hey, Lily. Mind if I ask a question? Not at all. Is anything wrong? I was just wondering... You're at least part foreign, right? She gives a small giggle before setting down her book. I've always been amused at how squeamish people are about that. Akira's mentioned how much she and I look different from most others before. The details are a bit complicated, but I'm half Japanese, half Scottish. Scottish? That's not exactly my first guess. Take some effort to not blurt it out, ah, blurt it out loud. I try to conjure images of the place in my mind. I think as far as the UK goes, Scotland isn't bad to live in, but I'm not really sure. My first guest of England was surprisingly close, at least geographically. That does leave another question, though. But you have no accent? That's where the details begin. I was born and raised in Japan, despite my mother being foreign. Ah, I get it. Hold on. If she moved to the dorm simply due to Akira working longer hours... So they don't live near the school? She gives a small sigh, as if she didn't expect me to go any deeper. Was her previous frankness just a front? Not... exactly. It's been a long time since we've actually met. I feel like I'm not getting the whole story, but I don't really want to go... unduly prying into her situation. Her about face so she shows she feels some... Ah, she feels kind of awkward about it. Ugh. I don't know how you do this, Jen. I really don't. I'm tripping over my words a hell of a lot. My wa my mouth is watering to hell's end every time. Ugh. So... Do you speak much English? To be honest, I don't know that much about Scotland, but at least I know that's the main language there. It takes her a moment to collect herself, appreciating the change in topic. That's right. My family mostly used Japanese around the house when I was young, but they made sure Akira and I knew our Scottish side just as well. I'm fluent in the language but I'm also studying it in school. To keep my skills up and to have the qualifications on paper, mainly. So you're bilingual? That's pretty impressive. I wouldn't go that far. Having parents who can speak the language is a large advantage. And English books in Braille aren't too hard to buy or import. With Yuko's help, at least. There's a relatively high demand for local English teachers here anyway, which also helps give me some motivation to learn it well. Demand for English teachers? For a moment I wonder why she brought this up. You're planning to be an English teacher? She gives an enthusiastic nod. It must be nice having such a definite future in mind. I've never really given much thought to mine, so I'm kind of envious. Hmm. What's wrong? It's 
just... I could see you as a teacher pretty easily. It suits you. For a moment, she's speechless. She lowers her face a little and lets out a nervous giggle. Something I've never seen her do before. With Lily's role as a class representative and her dependable nature, teaching does seem to be a line of work fitting her personality. Sorry, that was probably a little much. It is true, though. Waving her hand in front of her face dismissively, she quickly recovers. It's not that. It's just that... Only one other... Uh, only one person's ever said that to me before. A short, somewhat awkward silence follows the discussion. Without knowing it, I ended up steering into, into a troublesome topic again. I should try to cheer her up a little. It was me who went and got her brooding, after all. Want to go grab lunch at the cafeteria after this? It might perk her up a bit. Or at least take her mind off her apparently complicated family situation. Going by her smile, it seems to have the intended effect. I appreciate the thought, but the food there... Wait the quick redirection of the conversation. She does have a point, though. The food there isn't the greatest. Maybe the Shanghai? We could ask Hanako if she wants to come as well. Uh... What is it? I, o I almost forgot until you reminded me. Hanako's birthday is coming up soon, and I was going to go shopping in the city for a present tomorrow. If that's an invitation, I'd be happy to accompany you. The ability to get more used to the layout of the city would probably be a good thing. I've barely set foot in there, so I'd be hopelessly lost by myself. She gives a nod, signaling that she happily approves of this plan for Sunday. We eventually get back to our books, though before I begin reading again, I steal one last glance at her. Maybe I've been thinking on my situation too much. After all, everybody here would have their own unique circumstances. A chance to get outside and clear my head would probably do me good. We're going shopping! Bored of standing in place and watching the television in a shop window, I pull myself away from that tacky display with little effort. After living at Yamaku, the city seems like an entirely different world. No running in the halls. Calm and orderly conduct is to be used at all times in the classrooms. Students are to exit rooms after checking both directions for oncomers. Elevators are reserved for movement impaired students. Single file on stairs. Where are such strict, almost regimental standards? The city shopping arcade might as well be a strange country. While the school may have its fair share of hustle and bustle during the festival, the outside world is much different. It's strange. Having lived in a metropolitan city before my accident, this should feel more natural than Yamaku and the surrounding town ever could. Yet it feels foreign somehow. The elevated walkways and tall buildings, each adorned with billboards taller than any three people, don't do anything to distract me from the passing crowd's reactions. Lily keeps one hand on my shoulder, the other holding her cane, which taps the ground with a metronome-like steadiness. Looking over to her, that neutral smile of her still holds. Having only seen her in school uniform, I did not recognize her as she sat on a bench waiting for me to come. If not for her cane propped up against it in her distinctive hair. 
I can't tell whether they're glancing at her due to her height, her foreign looks, her obvious blindness, or all three. Not that any of those would make the situation less uncomfortable than it is. Do you have any ideas where to look first, Sal? The soft voice breaks me out of my line of thought. I can't imagine that she's failing to notice the attention she garners. But she seems unfazed by it. I get the feeling she's the type to enjoy walking outside, so she might be used to it by now. Not really. This is my first time in the city, so I got no idea where to go. She furrows her brow in thought, finding a route for us to take. I come to think of it, a way to communicate it. Something I'd noticed in the time I've been with her is how, when deep in thought, she lacks, she lacks close to any form of body language to show it. Her expression may change, but not a hint of movement shows. She seems to have little in a way of sweeping physical gestures in general, though, so I've assumed it's part of her preserved nature. Is there a large electronic store near here? I take a quick look around, finding mostly clothing stores. After a few seconds, I notice a store with a bright blue sign some distance away that fits her description. Yep, it's uh, just a bit ahead of us. Should we go in that direction? Thankfully, it's just the information she needed. With a nod, we start off and head towards Lily's unknown destination. Landmarks being our guide. There you go. One vanilla, one chocolate. I hand the money over the counter and take the cones to the railing that Lily's sitting on. I can't believe I let her trick me like this. She not only led me to an ice cream stall, but also got me to buy her some. At least she gave me the money for hers. Oh no, the girl made me buy ice cream that I will also enjoy. What a shame. Sure enough, she's patiently waiting where I'd left her. I guess she was planning on making the day an event rather than a simple shopping trip. Well, yeah, if you're kind of in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, going into the city, we definitely want to make that a day event. I call out to her and slowly place the vanilla cone in her outstretched hands, being careful to make sure she has a good hold of it before letting go. At least hers tastes are fairly normal. I was worried she'd ask for some weird flavor when she first asked. Yeah, when she, yeah, bleh, bleh. Oh, God, I'm saying it right, then I'm screwing myself up. <laughs> Here's the change. It's okay. Keep it. I moved to protest, but realized the futility of doing so over such a small amount. I slip the coin into my pocket, supplementing my meager allowance ever so slightly. Yeah, sorry, Hisao, she doesn't want to carry around the one yen coins. Those things are a blight. You get four million of them when you want to get rid of them, find the nearest vending machine, and hopefully you got enough to make it up, or else you're putting bigger ones in and getting more back. I have so many one yen coins. Oh my god. I... Hate one yen coins. <laughs> they are so small. They take up so much space. Ugh. And again, they're worth one yen. Yeah, 
Yeah, a whole cent. Guess what? You can't buy anything for a cent, especially in Japan. So you've got a million of these damn things clogging up your pockets or coin purses. I should have just threw them all inside of a vending machine before I left, but no, I took them all home with me. And the f currency exchange counter would only ever take the bills. They wouldn't take any of the coins. You mean like the issues we had with pennies? Yes, exactly. But they have clearly have no intention of stopping production of the one yen coin. So yeah, they're a pro tip for when you do eventually go to Japan. Whatever you do, try to use the one yen coins in some fashion. Do not have little donation things anywhere. Not that we could see, at least not that we were really looking. Yeah, not not that I could actually ever see. Stuff like that I think was if they were around, those signs were strictly in Japanese and not English, so I weren't going to recognize it as a donation thing. Guide dogs for blind people, not blind dogs. Hey, you could need a, you can get a guide dog for a blind dog. That's a thing. Guide dog for blind dog. Lily shows no signs of wanting to get up, so I take a seat beside her and start eating my own ice cream. Summer weather's nice. Hopefully it'll hold out for a while. You too? I'm beginning to think I'm the only person who prefers winter. I contemplate her statement for a long moment. Yeah, I think you might be. It draws the intended reaction. She's cute when she's pouting. Still, I can't really imagine what's so good about winter. You can't go out without bundling up, and you still freeze anyway. Probably also has a bad association with weather because of the winter, because that's when he had his heart attack. I would kind of, you know, at least partially associate uh, my massive life-changing moment to the time of the year. I used to live further north, where there'd be plenty of snow to play in, so it's a little nostalgic. I don't like the heat very much either. At least you could wear a skirt, so don't complain about that. Bruh, you can wear a skirt if you want to. If you feel weird about wearing a skirt, wear a kilt then. Okay, a skirt is not just, you know, a one gendered item. Anyone can wear anything. Enough with the societal everythings. The supposed societal norms. Fuck that shit. Times are changing. I've worn a kilt and it's actually really comfortable. You have deaf grown so deaf grown so much since I first met you. Though I mean it's been how many years now? Going on almost 10 years now? People change. Uh, pretty sure I was in 12B as well. So, yeah, we're basically going on 10 years now. <laughs> I 
Unless I'm actively trying to change as a person. I'm not exactly proud of the person I was 10 years ago. Yes, that is specifically too. Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh. Oh my god. Okay, yes. I freaking said that. I get it. It was oh my god. I still don't even know why. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, you'll never let me forget. Never. Just gotta be like D and own it. Oh. Oh, god. Yeah, you're. you're. <laughs> no fibs D. Everything he says is the truth. Oh, good lord. I had actually almost forgotten I had said that for a little while, and, oh, uh, well, yeah, I'm not gonna remember that still. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for that. No regrets. <laughs> oh, good lord. I hope you don't introduce me to your other friends as, Hey, yeah, I met this guy. One of the first things he said to me was, Damn, girl, you got some curves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I, I, I needed that bit of that laugh. I needed a bit of a laugh today. <laughs> she gives an amused giggle as we both get back to finishing off our already melting cones. I idly sit and watch the crowds going by as we eat, catching bits and pieces of conversation. Looking to Lily, I see her dutifully licking her ice cream from the top downwards, blissfully unaware of the fact it's beginning to melt. It's melting. Where? Um, down a bit? She lowers her mouth from the top of the cone, but has no idea of exactly where the ice cream's dripping. What follows is a game of guiding her left and right until she finally finds it. Appreciate that we don't have a fan shot of her licking the ice cream. Yeah, I, I, I half expected that first time around. Yeah, the CGs they do have are... Well, they, they fit fairly well. The only fan service ones are the obvious fan service ones, which I have turned off for stream. For obvious reasons. To any onlooker, it must seem absolutely bizarre. A girl with her eyes closed turning her cone over and over as the guy next to her gives her instructions. A strange variant of childhood blindfold games, maybe. Okay, we don't even we don't see that. Okay, we see more of a front view and just the focus is more on, you know, her face than she makes. Yet lemons in the shed, I know. God. Ugh. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, good lord. Don't worry, Emmys will be the next route after this. That one, un 
gonna have to definitely make sure I know when to cut away to before those scenes will happen because of the thing I discovered. Yeah, it, the CGs are censored. The sprites just beforehand are not. So I cut away from that. Let the goof image for the CG come up, which I think when I did my test run, it was like a mouse eating an apple or something. There we go. Yeah, it is part of the game. I'll check other people's playthroughs on Twitch just to see if they're up or don't try to cover it in any way. If they don't cover it, I'll leave the screen up as it happens. If they do cut away or cover it in some fashion, I'll do the same. I'll, I mean, I'd rather be safe than sorry if I can. good time we finally finish our treats and while away the time conversing uh, and while away the time conversing casually caught mid-sentence Lily perks her head in her trademark manner it's an unmistakable sign that something's caught her attention uh, what is it there's Akira somewhere over there I think I heard her I raise an eyebrow as I look in the direction she's facing, somewhat doubtful of her ability to pick out Akira's lone voice in the din. Sure enough, though, a blonde girl in a suit can be seen through the tiny gaps between people walking every which way. I raise a hand and wave, trying to catch her attention. Sato! Hey, Sato! Stops in her tracks and looks toward me, evidently noticing my calls. As she does, I notice someone walking beside her. Can't get a good look at whoever it is, though, before the two begin walking toward where we are. As they reach us, Lily and I stand and dust ourselves off. Akira? Hey, you two! nods towards me, a gesture which I quickly return. My gaze shifts towards the young girl next to her and our eyes meet. As they do, Akira plops a hand onto her head, a move that doesn't seem to phase her. I don't believe we've met. I'm Hideaki. Pleased to meet you, Sal. Guy's name, huh? Guess I dodged a bullet there. Bow's somewhat restrained by Akira's hand being on his head. Oh. Hideaki's here too? Are you well? Akira's been taking very good care of me, thank you. Akira grins as if to affirm the point and rubs his head hard, dragging it around in a circular motion. Dreary face during this is somewhat amusing. Uncle's out on business again. So I'm taking around the for ah, taking around town for today. I'd have preferred to be spending the day on a date with my boyfriend, but Hideaki gives a cough to try and redirect Akira's thoughts. As he does so, though, I find mine wandering. They're related. Further, as first cousins? I, ex I suppose that explains why she's taking care of him in any case. Come to think of it, Hideaki. How do you know my name? Kira told me. Being a Yamaku student, I suppose you're disabled in some way. 
Not everyone in Yamaku is disabled. Which I only learned a handful of days ago. I give silent thanks to Shizune and Misha from their, for their stream of information about how the school works. Because of them, I found out that since the school will accept practically anybody suffering from non-mental disabilities, it doesn't discriminate against healthy people either. It seems unlikely that many in good health will enroll here, though. While the standard of education is pretty high, it's extremely isolated and very much focused on helping disabled students. You're dodging the question. Damn, he's sharp. Or I can say another word, though, he decides to take a stab at it himself. And if I were to call it myself... Your heart? Kara looks mildly curious at me. Her, her interest peaked as well. I'm not sure it was a lucky guess. How did you... You show no missing limbs or deformities, so external disabilities are out. Considering the lack of any strange mannerisms, it's also unlikely you'd have any mental disability. But Yamaku doesn't take mentally disabled students. I know. Leaving that aside, the only possibility left is that of internal disabilities. I didn't know which one you might bear, so I guessed. Correctly, as it turns out. And your reaction confirmed my guess. More than a little bemused, I look to Akira. She grins and shrugs, obviously taking some enjoyment out of her partner's deductions. He's sharp, yes, but more than a little unsympathetic. Logical, but lacking in tact. His attitude reminds me of Shizune in a way, as do his looks. May I ask why you're staring at me? Surely I'm not that unusual a specimen. Does he not know how unusual he looks? I could overlook the spats and clothing as being coincidental, but the ribbon in his hair really is too much. This is entirely besides the point, though. Ah, there's theories about why he dresses the way he does get into that when we get into Shizune's route in the future. Sorry, you just remind me of someone. Kira gives him a sharp jab with her elbow. Told you you're not that much different from her. He coughs into his hand to try and maintain an upright and serious demeanor. I see you've met my sister, then. Perhaps my full name might help you. I'm Hideaki Hakamichi. You're probably thinking of my sister, Shizune Hakamichi. Oh, so he's Shizune's brother. Wait a minute. If Hideaki is the son of Akira's uncle, and Shizune is his sister, that means Lily and Shizune's fathers are brothers-in-law. Therefore... Lily and Shizune are first cousins? He looks like Link from Zelda. <laughs> yeah, give him blonde hair, he'd be a dead ringer. I think the blue eyes help. Blue eyes and length of hair actually kind of help give that away. Lily groans in an uncharacteristically unrestrained manner. The reaction earns an amused smirk from her sister. The amenity between the two just took on another meaning. I thought it was simply a matter of difficulty of communication between the two. But a family feud makes things much more complicated. You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. She gives a half-hearted shrug. She mustn't give as much weight to the two's conflict as I do. Well, that's how it is. 
What are you two up on anyway this fine day? Up to... Uh, what are you two up to anyway on this fine day? Jesus Christ. I, <laughs> ah. We're shopping for Hanako's birthday present. But they'll be coming up soon, so this is the last chance we'll have before school starts again for the week. Yura makes a strange face, as if Lily had just said that the sky wasn't blue and the clouds not white. Isn't her birthday on the 10th next month? Yes. Why? Is something wrong? Kira's face seems to collapse. It's an utterly unbefitting expression for someone so rowdy and headstrong. Folks didn't call you yet? As Lily shakes her head cluelessly, I look at Hideaki to see if he knows anything about this. A simple shrug is his only answer. For a moment, Akira ponders what to do before smiling once again. The fact that she can hide her emotions so quickly and efficiently is unsettling. Hey, Shorty. Sorry. Could you hang out with Hisao for a while? He nods and waves her off. Kira placing an arm on Lily's shoulder as she guides her away and out of earshot. And so I'm alone with Shorty. So, nice weather, isn't it? It seems so. I guess they dumped us. Indeed. What a farcical attempt at small talk. I got no idea how to talk to this guy. Even his robotic responses aren't helping. Blood and a stone come to mind. Without another word, he begins to rock on his feet in an obvious gesture of boredom with this discussion. He really is like a little kid, despite his serious demeanor. Suspecting the conversation over, I decide to accomplish what I came here to do in the first place. I'm going to go search for a present. Coming? Not much else to do. In a little while, we come to a small shop beside a convenience store. For once, the store windows aren't filled with electronics and computer games, but dolls, stuffed bears, and all manners of woodcrafted oddities. Othello's Antiques? An antique store? Well, if there's anything in this town that suit Hanako, I guess it'd be here. I reach for the old-looking door handle, and pull back at the last minute as I realize my companion's gone adrift. Not coming in? I'll just be in the newsstand for a while. Don't mind me. His voice makes it painfully clear he has zero interest in what's in the store, and that he doesn't feel obligated to follow me. As he wanders off without another word, I push the thick wooden door and enter the store, a bell above me ringing out. Ah, there we go. There's air guitar playing right now, Jen. That was playing during my uh, Gunpla stream last night. One of the tracks that'll play in every route. The musty smell of old books and wooden shelves is distinctly anarchistic. This is so different from Emmy's route so far. Oh, yeah. From what I have played, the two routes that are somewhat similar, and I, I mean somewhat, are Lily and Hanako, just because Hanako and Lily are together for a long period of time. 
So they're similar in that regard, but they're still different. They're all still different enough. Hisao is also kind of a different character in each route. He, he changes a little. From reviews, Japanese school life doesn't really have much of a difference. Oh, that's sad. I looked at the counter beside the door. The graying man behind it sits there silently, reading a tattered book. He certainly fixed the look of the place. Slowly wandering through the aisles, the person I'm reminded of as I inspect each handcrafted and imported oddity in turn isn't Hanako. Crouching down, I examine the ancient oak desk inside the shop window. At least 30 dolls, all varying wildly in size and make. The only similarity between them is the long Victorian dresses they wear. I turn the price tag of one of them that looks to be about waist high. It's not in my price bracket. At all. I do the same to each of them, getting more and more depressed as they get smaller and smaller in size. That is, until I reach the very smallest one. It's affordable, just, yet of quality make and with long auburn hair and a little blue dress. I decide that's the kind of present Hanako would appreciate. Pretty looking and far from gaudy. After I carefully pick it up, I decide to keep looking around the store. I'm not sure whether it's because I like the atmosphere or out of simple curiosity. Peeking around the corner before I go to the next aisle, I see that the shelves in this one are stocked with wooden toys. From toy cars to intricate automatons. Or automation, whatever it is. I'm going to say automatons. I just have to pause for a moment here. Tuckered behind a line of nutcrackers, I notice a little plain wooden box. It feels surprisingly light as I pick it up with my free hand. The lid only needs the smallest movement to pop open. The little metal drum inside beginning to rotate immediately. For seconds on end, I simply stand there listening to the palm-sized melody. As it plays, I take the tiny price tag in my fingers and bring it up to my face, the minuscule cursive writing taking some effort to read. It's affordable. Sort of. Oh, I love this thing. I hope you can hear this. I love that music box. There's a reason for it. <laughs> I love I, I I like that so much. Grimacing slightly, I close the lid and make my way to the counter with doll and music box in hand. When I lay the two on the counter, the man behind it sits up and takes stock of them. He doesn't hide very well his surprise at someone my age buying them. It's painful, but I hand over the money for the two and leave the store with a small opaque bag in hand. Hideaki being there takes me by surprise. Oh, hi. I thought you'd be at the newsstand. Akira gave me a call. 
She's waiting for us at the fountain with Lily. At least that solves the issue of trying to find them again. We head off back to the fountain. Hideaki's immaculate posture and presentation, despite his appearance, makes for a strange contrast even as we walk. Lily and Akira stand there waiting for us, their faces hard to read. Hey, ready to go, Shorty? Hideaki's mood seems to improve as he rejoins us, rejoins her. See ya, Lily. Sal. Tell Hanako I said happy birthday. We will. Bye. Goodbye, Akira. And with that, two disappear into the fracas of the afternoon city crowd. Turning to Lily, I notice she's carrying a small bag. It's now that I realize why her disposition feels different from before. While Lily's typically the type to wear her emotions on her sleeve, her expression and tone are clouded and difficult to read. It's more than a little off-putting. Given the effort she's making to hide her emotions, I doubt she wants to be cornered on why, she, why she's feeling this way. Already bought Hanako a present? Yes. Have you? Yeah. Shall we head back to the bus stop then? Okay. There should be a bus uh, back to Yamaku pretty soon. And with that, we begin to walk. It feels strange compared to before. Lily's hand on my forearm feels unusually tense. And the whole atmosphere is extraordinarily awkward. The silence continues for a long while. I really don't like seeing her like this. Hanako's birthday party is going to have to be held earlier. Is the fourth going to be alright for you? I have no other possible obligations anyway, so I reflexively nod. Only afterwards do I remember that doing so was pointless and quickly answer so by speech. She tries to collect herself, a task that looks almost pitiable in how plain it is to see how distant her thoughts are. Sorry, Hisao. You said the bus would be coming soon, right? That's right. But as she says that, I have an idea. Actually, do you have anything to do later today? I don't believe so. Why do you ask? This is the point where I'd normally take your hand and rush you somewhere. But even without that, you'll have to trust me. Okay? I take her hand and gently lead her on. Her distant face replaced by one of mild surprise and curiosity. As the waitress sets uh, the cup of tea and cup of coffee that I ordered onto the table, I thank her before she takes her leave. Truth be told, I really lucked out in finding this cafe. I didn't really know where I was going. Rather, I was just looking for any cafe that looked relatively nice. Having managed to recover a little, Lily tentatively sips at her cup as I take a long gulp of the coffee in front of me. As I hoped, her face lights up as she realizes what flavor it is. Ah, this is wonderful. So, how did you know that this was... I'd ask for French vanilla black tea, hedging my bets that'd be her favorite flavor, or at least one she liked. Well, I don't really know that much about tea, it sounded like one she might appreciate. On the basis of her liking vanilla ice cream. A tea connoisseur? I am definitely not. That's thoughtful of him. She's having a... Uh, clearly something was messing with her and he just decides, screw it, taking her to a cafe, getting her some tea, let's end the day off right. <laughs> Exactly, it's the, it's the thought. You couldn't just... 
they couldn't just go back to school. He he couldn't leave her in the way she was. He had to do something. It was a lucky guess. You really like tea, don't you? She puts her teacup down and gives a tiny nod. A familiar small smile thankfully perched on her face once again. Drinking tea is... calming, I think. The amount you drink? Are you sure you're not addicted to it? Caffeine addiction is pretty common nowadays. Did I ever say I wasn't? She lets out a giggle as my head drops. We all have our vices, I suppose. And there are worse things to be addicted to. French vanilla black tea, huh? I'll have to remember that. For a while, we both silently drink. It's comforting to have someone like her nearby in such new surroundings. Even if it's just the two of us sitting in silence. I begin to wonder if this feeling is the same for her until she sets down her cup. Sal, do you mind if I ask you a slightly odd question? That depends on the question, I guess. I was wondering what your favorite color is. Everyone has one, after all. I almost reply before realizing why the seemingly mundane question is actually quite strange. My favorite color? But... She gives a pouting look, wanting me to answer anyway. While the answer seems unavoidably wasted on her, there isn't any harm in giving it. I've always had a thing for green. I'd say that's my favorite. Green, is it? What do you think of what do you think of when contemplating that color? I suppose grass fields and trees in summer. The army as well, with camouflage. Men always seem to like the military. But that sounds like a nice color. A very nice color. She nods her head a little, as if approving of the choice. Considering how foreign the concept of color is into her mind, labeling it by association seems reasonable enough. If everyone has a favorite color, what's yours? White. I'm told it's the color of snow and of ice cream. You're no better than me, then. You only like that color because of a favorite food. I guess white is nice, too, though. And speaking of colors, it'll be getting dark soon. Let me help you up. Lily offers her hand, which I take in mind to help lever her up from her seat at the table. Softness compared to mine takes me off guard, as I'm not really used to such casual contact. It doesn't seem to bother her at all, though. While well, it seems fairly obvious why, it feels uh, it it feels like just one more ladylike aspect to her. As her hand moves to her pocket, I quickly cut her off. Don't worry, I'll pay for this. Oh. Thank you, Hisao. She gives an earnest smile at the gesture, a reward, a reward much greater than that, than that of her words. Words are just words. Actions speak louder than words. She showed she was physically happy. It's the smile. That, that's what he needed. Mission accomplished, Hisao. You did it. You brightened her mood. By the time we step off the bus, it's well and truly dark. We make our way up the hill in silence, both of us behaving a little awkwardly, probably because of the day's events. While I'm still concerned over Lily's withdrawn nature after meeting with her sister, the fact I managed to cheer her up even slightly feels like a personal victory. But it feels like the air between us has changed. Maybe it's only a bit, but it's something I don't think either of us realized before. 
That was... a date, wasn't it? It was. That doesn't elude either of us. The question's answer being so self-evident as to be rhetorical. Awkward as it may be, I don't think this feeling is bad. In fact, quite the opposite. I don't know what it is, I certainly can't be sure, but it feels like something a little more than friendship. Understanding? Empathy? Searching for words to adequately describe it is difficult. Nonetheless... Would you like to do this again sometime, Lily? Without shopping for presents? The tentative question is met with the same look from Lily as before. Her pale skin makes the rosy tint of her cheeks just slightly more noticeable, and her face, though still pointed to the street ahead of her, lowers. Just a little. Okay. Alright, so she's down with going out on a regular dates in the near future. Mm. Yep. Started as just going to get presents for a mutual friend. <laughs> Ended with the potential for actual dates. Not bad. Not bad at all, Hassel. I walk down the hall of the girls' dormitories, my school bag in hand. A doll lies inside, carefully placed on top of a small box. I've been carrying the box there for a while now. Still not sure what to do with it. This whole situation, come to think of it, is bizarre. Well, I've known of Hanako's upcoming birthday party for a while now, but I had no idea of exactly what the celebrations would be until I found a single note left in the abandoned tea room earlier today. I hold it up and read it again, double-checking the instructions. The plain black handwriting, fairly legible despite Lily's blindness, clearly thanks to considerable effort and care. Hisao, we'll be holding a party at my place. Please come at 6 o'clock to room 225 in the girls' dormitory. Sorry for notifying you this way, but I have class representative du duties. Lily Sato. Not reassured, I continue walking down the hallway until I reach Lily's dormitory room. I hesitate for a second, but eventually give three sharp taps on the door. And I hate to do this, but I'm going to go through Hanako's birthday party tomorrow. Because <laughs> I went through a lot today. I actually got through a fair bit there. I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, there's nothing really for in here. Okay. Alright, so tomorrow, 12 o'clock, we'll continue on with this. Because, well, we're, we're getting into the really good stuff. Again, the Katawa Shoujo is replacing Tales of Symphonia for Monday and Tuesday streams. While the rest of the schedule is the same as it's always been. The Twitter poll is up for what the next viewer's choice Sunday will be. The choices are Seven Days to Die, Star Wars Republic Commando, and Monster Hunter World. So whichever one you want to see me have a go at, leave the vote. My Twitter link is down in my uh, description, so one click away. <laughs> so while you haven't started yet, I will... <laughs> I myself will eventually be going into Gen Stream when she starts, so if you care for some more, probably better voice acting and reading, go to her stream. <laughs> she 
you certainly can read this stuff a lot better. Yeah, and if you are going to be a bit late, uh, the next part will take a long while. So I'm just going to end here because, well, uh, my, uh, I need to drink something. I ran out of tea like 20 minutes into this stream. <laughs> I'm, I'm going off of nothing, and I've been talking for like two freaking hours. <laughs> Eating was more important than being punctual. Yes. Yes, it. You can be late on here so long as you're eating or doing something else that is important. This does not take priority. <laughs> it's a reminder to anyone else watching: make sure you're eating, eating and drinking regularly. It's a do as I say, not as I do kind of thing, because I'm bad for skipping meals. Anywho, I hope everybody has themselves a good Monday, and I'll see you next time.